Seamless planetary landing, atmospheric flight, no borders or loading screens down on planets, walk or fly anywhere you want. The promise of Star Citizen has always been enticing, as has its goal to achieve what no other space game ever has. The latest information from CIG then shows that Star Citizen is aiming to be a truly next-gen space game. What we can see on screen right now is amazing footage from the demo of Star Citizen's game engine known as Star Engine. CIG's plan is to include all of these features shown here directly into Star Citizen. A bunch of them will be arriving very soon. In fact, starting with the new cloud system, ground fog as well as lighting shafts that will be releasing in the very next patch, 3.22. Elsewhere, CIG have discussed other features such as fully destructible environments, they've demonstrated all of this, the addition of ray tracing, DLSS and FSR support, vastly improved water effects, a brand new fire system, HDR support and much more. We're going to talk about all of these additions right now. As for the footage on screen, this is a seamless transition right across the entirety of the Stanton star system. It lasts 23 minutes and I'm going to be posting a video reacting to this very, very soon. Keep an eye out for that because it will be released in a shortly. And if you're finding this video interesting or useful, please do consider liking and subscribing. It really does help the video and the channel. Now, ever since the announcement of the current crop of space gamers, starting with Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen, as soon as we knew we would be able to land on planets at some point, one thing I've always wanted to do is fly through atmospheric planets and awesome cloud systems. Now, Star Citizen has had some pretty great clouds for a while now, volumetric clouds that are available on some of the planets. However, they're not quite as good as some of the other available cloud systems in other titles out there, such as Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS World. However, from a patch 3.22, which may be released in this year or perhaps early next year, these clouds are going to be taking a dramatic leap forward. We can see some of that on the screen right here. There's an entirely new cloud system which improves the clouds themselves, but beyond that, this extends to other effects in the atmosphere. That means a new ground fog system, as well as a new lighting, a new light shafts. This is where the sun rays shine through the clouds and cast shadows, as well as beams of light, also known as god rays. So when you combine all of these things together, what you end up with is a dramatically different looking environment. Far more realistic and much more moody. For anyone who likes to spend their time exploring planetary surfaces, this is going to be a fantastic addition without any doubt. Elsewhere, the planets themselves are soon going to be vastly improved. The way planets are generated on your computer on the GPU is going to be changed from being mesh generated to being texture focused. This will have a pretty far-reaching impact upon the way planets appear. Firstly, when you're up as high as we are here, you won't see any repeating textures or see them far less than you would at one point. It also means that environments are going to look a little bit more interesting to say the least. That would include most ground areas such as rocks and mountains. And when you combine this with other improvements, well, you get a change that is rather dramatic overall. Just look at this for example, a truly beautiful looking environment. And then there's the addition of animals. So Star Citizen is now going to have both flora as well as fauna. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the next video, so do keep an eye out for that. Now, another massive improvement to the planets and environments is the changes to water. Now, I'll make no secret of this. Over the past years, I've never been very impressed with the way Star Citizen actually ha uh, handles and represents water. But CIG have been spending a whole bunch of time improving the water system, and you can now see it both the looks as well as behaves far more realistic. This comes down to a variety of different factors, but two, perhaps of the main ones, is the new improved shader system, which just makes the water look that much better, but also the behavioural system, the physics behind the water. We can see that waves and lighting on those waves is vastly improved, but so too is the interaction with the water system. Just look at how this works. So yeah, very, very impressive. The question, of course, is how well is this going to work within a multiplayer environment? We don't really know that. All we've got is this demo on screen, and it may end up performing very different once you end up with a whole selection of people in the same area. At any rate, yeah, I do feel the water looks very good here. Now, another area that's been improved is fire. 
This is going to have well, some pretty dramatic gameplay effects if CIG implement it as they're suggesting here. And I do believe that players are going to be able to test this all out very soon as I think, from what I understand, is going to be added into the Arena, com uh, arena Commander mode of the game. So in effect, what we've got here is a fire that acts and behaves realistically. It needs a source of heat, it needs a source of fuel to actually burn. The fire will spread around whichever environment it's in, and if it's on board your ship, it will just continue to burn until there's nothing else left to burn, and your ship's going to be in a pretty poor state at that point. Now, the gameplay here it will mean that players will need to actually have to put this fire out. This can be done in a variety of ways. If you get, get hold of a fire extinguisher, you can try and firefight here, and hopefully put the fire out if it's not too big or too extensive. The other way to fight a fire is to remove the oxygen. So that could mean sealing off certain doors and then venting the oxygen out of that room. So some pretty neat graphical effects here as well as the related gameplay to go along with it. Of course, after the fire is burnt out, the areas also look dramatically different here because yeah, they're completely burnt out. Now at this point, you may be noticing that the game generally seems to look far better in much of this footage here. Some of this will no doubt be because this is promotional material. Again, we won't know just how good this actually looks until we get hands on with it. But another reason is because CIG have improved the rendering of Star Citizen. In addition to all the things we've discussed so far, there's been two other additions. This is HDR support as well as ray tracing support and global illumination. Now, as far as I could understand, there's no really direct details on how this uh, ray tracing is going to be added into Star Citizen, whether it's going to be an exclusive NVIDIA thing, or whether it's uh, AMD ray tracing, or whether just maybe CIG have come up with their own version. If I've somehow missed this explanation from the showcase, do let me know in the comments section. It is possible I missed the reference here, but like I say, as best as I could understand, as best as I could see, there wasn't any clear explanation of this. At any rate, one thing that was clear is that yes, it does look very nice and it really does massively change uh, the way Star Citizen looks. And this is no doubt similar to other games we've seen over the years, whether that's uh, rather fantastic ray tracing in a Cyberpunk or indeed any other game. Whichever way we look at it though, it's pretty clear from many of the clips that were shown here at CitizenCon that uh, yeah, the ray tracing and global illumination will change the lighting in many different environments and under many different conditions. So HDR support to high dynamic ranges also come in. This will be great for those of you who have monitors and TVs that actually support this feature. So those are the large scale environmental and rendering changes that will affect the game overall. But there's also a lot of other changes, changes I wouldn't necessarily consider smaller, but that nonetheless will be improving the game. These are not necessarily environmental th uh, changes. One of these is what CIG are calling a blood, sweat and tears. Now again, how far this will be taken in the game itself it remains to be seen, but based on the demo, well, the characters are going to start showing sweat and blood based upon the conditions they have as well as their injuries. Just look at how this blood works right here, for example. So yeah, this has the, uh, the ability to be a bit gruesome, shall we say. Now, sticking with the characters for the moment, there's also going to be another thing called Star Cloth. This will change how uh, clothes and cloth is simulated. Not necessarily just limited to clothes, it can also be attributed to flags, I guess, as well as uh, clo bed clothes and other things in the environment. But it seems that clothes is the most obvious feature that will be affected, and we got to see a huge demo of this uh, at CitizenCon. Another area, another thing that's going to be simulated for characters is hair. This seems a little bit like NVIDIA hair works in terms of how it works and in terms of how it actually appears. CIG are calling this star hair. And they were very clear that this is an early prototype and to be honest, I'm not sure to what extent this would ever actually appear in the game. Seems hard to believe that every single character would feature hair like this. Maybe it will be reserved for cutscenes. And finally, another area which looked especially interesting is a new physics system called Maelstrom. This allows for destruction of structures in the environment as well as ships themselves. We got to see a demonstration of some ruins and some old structures being further damaged and essentially completely destroyed, but also got to see some spaceships being completely ripped apart. Now, the interesting thing here with the ship's destruction specifically 
is that it's not simply a case of pieces of a ship falling off or falling apart, but goes way beyond that. So, for example, imagine a ship falling apart, a wing breaks off it. The game is then going to calculate whether or not that wing should actually have power still flying through it, and it will be determined where the power source, the energy source is for that particular part of the ship. In short, it means that even if ships fall apart or break apart, you could still have power flying to them. And this will depend largely upon how the ship was damaged, as well as how the ship was constructed. So yeah, some massive, massive changes and improvements to the Star Engine here that should be going into Star Citizen at some point in the future. Some of these, like we said, are coming into patch 3.22, others might be much further down the line. Now, I don't think it's hyperbole to say in any respects that based on the demo of Star Engine alone, Star Citizen does look like a truly a next generation space game. Literally, there's no other space game out there that even comes close to comparing. There's a few takeaway thoughts here though. Firstly is that, well, are CIG advertising a Star Citizen here, or are they advertising the Star Engine itself? If they're advertising the Star Engine, are they perhaps considering licensing the engine to other developers? This could be a thing in the future. I don't see any reason why not. But as to how backers might feel about that engine, that technology being licensed to other developers, well, that remains to be seen. Another thought here, of course, is that all the demos we've seen here so far are obviously highly curated. They do look very, very good, and that's not unique to CIG. Pretty much every game studio out there does this type of thing, and really, the proof will be when we get it in our hands and when we see the final product. And lastly, of course, is the question of performance. Star Citizen obviously already runs somewhat, well, sluggishly on many setups, how will all of this new systems, all of these new renderers, everything else, how will this actually affect performance? Well, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have any concerns about this. I do have some concerns. Uh, yeah, the game doesn't run ideal as it is. And with all these new additions, it could be a little bit problematic. But here's the last little bit of information that I've saved for the end for this particular concern. CIG are implementing a new render system that comes with a Gen 12 renderer as well as Vulkan. There's also a whole bunch of server fixes planned, which includes a server mesh in, which according to this tweet uh, by a CIG employee is saying is now complete. So yeah, a lot of potential here for, well, just maybe the game performing much better, even with the addition of all these new features. So looking good. Do keep an eye out for my next video. I'm going to be uh, reacting and talking about this brand new Star Engine demo. So yeah, full 23 minutes. Do take a look.